we get into this accelerator program. And I should mention that by this time, I had, I had uh, also added a co-founder to my business who was um, a, a, a dude, his name is Taylor, Taylor Wang. Mm-hmm. I had met him when I was in China doing shoes. He was from, he's, he was born and raised in Berkeley. He went to UC Davis. He's a sneakerhead. And he would be selling, he sold sneakers online in like, you know, he sold like the real ones. Like he was like a real sneakerhead. And he was in these, you know, online forums where they traded uh, rare release shoes. And someone had connected us when I was in China. And he was trying to find rare release sneakers. And I would jump over to Hong Kong or I would jump over to Tokyo and I would find shoes that had only come out over there. And I would give, and I would work with him to move them online. And so that's how we met. And we had like a little side shoe business um, with the, the rare release shoes and vapes and, and all that kind of stuff. But when that what was did high. you bring to the table that you needed that you said, let me bring you in as a, co, as a co-partner? So Taylor was a computer guy. He's a computer guy. I was not a computer guy, right? Uh, yeah, like, so Taylor, Taylor, had, been, Taylor had been so selling, so meaning so Taylor so. had been selling things online, right? He knew how to build websites. He knew how to, you know, like, he had been in that world. And, um, and he had just, uh, when we reconnected, he had just built an e-commerce business that he sold to a guilt group. Um, it was sort of like a Groupon type of business. Mm-hmm. When the Groupon was hot and all that, it was all these other little businesses that popped up like Groupon. He had one of them and they got rolled up and they bought that. And so he was fresh off of that. And when we linked back up and I told him what I was doing, he just started helping me just build the website. And so I was like, yo, let's just do this thing. Like you the other half, you know, like you the technical side. And um, so anyway, Taylor and I end up getting accepted to 500 startups. We get in, like I said, it was $6,000 left of the, the money that I raised before. They gave us another 50K. You raised, because I know you and I spoke offline, so I want to make sure that, that, that we get it in, in this conversation. You raised $48,000 to begin with, yeah. all given to you by friends and family. Uh, friends. Friends. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and all of color. These are African Americans who believed in a young black brother doing his thing. They saw your vision, but more importantly, they understood that you were a man of integrity and they wanted to invest in you and your dream, in addition yeah. to the idea itself. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, 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 I mean, I think, you know, the common thread was like, I mean, I think, you know, we had known each other for a long time and we had that sort of, um, you know, they had that, I had credibility with people, but also this was something that they just wanted to see come into the world. This was something that black people, we've, we've been tired of this for a very long time, which is the, the Korean stores selling all of our shit. And we're not, we don't, we don't make any money from it. And it's not, and the, and the store, the Korean store is not a very nice, friendly, inviting, there place, right? They're, they're not, you know, and I have no, um, it's not anything anti-Korean. In fact, I have a lot of respect for anybody who's an immigrant, who's willing to come to another country into an environment and a neighborhood that, a lot of Americans won't even go into and set up shop. I have a lot of respect for that. You know, like that's some, that's true hustler, you know? So, but at the same time, once you come in and you set up shop, if you don't integrate with the community, there's going to be, there's going to be static. Correct. There's going to be static. And so, um, this was not about me saying, take anything from them. It was about, I want to give something to my people. Um, I want us to be involved. I want us to have, to be part of this supply chain and part of the value chain. 
And so anyway, um, we got into 500 startups and um, this was like a Silicon Valley cohort of like 20 something companies in there that they let in. You're there for like three months. Uh, they'll help you put your pitch deck together um, and they'll introduce you to, to investors. And How much funding did you receive? 50K to start. Uh -huh. And then by the end of it, I had raised another 850,000. So 50K to start. I'm, I'm trying to understand what this package looks like. 50K mm -hmm. to start. How much of your business you have to give up? 5%. 50K, 5%. But the true gem was they introduced you to other investors. Yeah, I mean, they probably accelerated me by two years. I mean, you come in there and they're like, make a list of 100 investors that you want to talk to. Bring it to us and we will make all the, and we'll just make intros. Boom, 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 boom. And these are people like, it would have taken me years to try and meet all these people. I, I didn't know anybody to introduce me to any of these people. Right? So get you in the door. Um, yeah. You mentioned earlier that you are in these pitch competitions. So right yeah. about now, I'm assuming you're ready for these meetings. You have your yeah. pitch down pat. And just... You know, I want to, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. You're an MBA. Yeah. I got to believe MBA, they, they, they focus on these elaborate business plans. <laughs> it, it, you know, did that help you? Or now that you're pitching to venture capitalists, investors, yeah. Are they looking for something more dumbed down? Like, wh what does that look like for you? Super dumbed down. I had to unlearn my MBA shit to know how to talk in Silicon Valley. So, um, in Silicon Valley, it's like, you know, a 10 slide deck with as few words as possible, more charts, and it's just about telling a story about a market, a huge market that exists, um, a customer who is dying for this problem that they have to be solved, and a clever way for you to solve that problem. That's it. And then, and then, and then why are you the one to do it? Why are you going to win? So this is about storytelling, right? And which makes sense because early stage investment, there's not a lot to go on, right? There's not big models to build and financial spreadsheets to analyze cash flows and discount cash flows and all of this stuff, balance sheets and shit. It's an idea. And maybe you have a little bit of traction. Like when we're in 500 startups, we had maybe like seven, eight thousand dollars a month in in sales. It wasn't like rocking through the that wasn't going crazy, but but it was going up each month a little bit, right? And so um, you're just telling that story, and they're investing more in the potential and size of this market, size of this problem, than necessarily exactly what the business looks like today because they expect it to change over time anyway mm -hmm. right so they sort of discount all these very fancy models and business plans because they're sort of like none of that it's not going to go that way anyway like it's not going to turn out that way anyway so we just want to know the opportunity is real you're a great entrepreneur you have a real customer who's in dire need of this this thing and You've got the grit and tenacity to just stick with it and build the thing out. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.